What's a story, amigos? This is Kino with some cool stories for today's story time. In our first book, read by Barbara What's Bain, story? Penelope learns how to make her own story. Long, long ago, whispered Aunt Isabel, there was a deep, dark cave in a gloomy forest where nobody lived except creatures who loved night and darkness and hid from the light. Also, is Fluffy the right name for a porcupine? He ate a lot of fluffy marshmallows. He rolled in shaving cream and feathers. He even tried to become a bunny. But the truth remained, Fluffy was her. And Marcus Redman reads about the neat Marcus gift Redman. Morris got for Christmas. Suddenly, he noticed a package that had been overlooked. He opened it. And in it was a disappearing bag. Major Flooding for Storytime is made possible by a grant from Helen and Peter Bing, so that families everywhere can share the joy of reading with their children. Additional funding is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. By the annual financial support from viewers like you. And by the National Endowment for Children's Educational Television. gonna do I I wish just rollerblades would be here but they're not this is bad news I think they're lost forever come on kids let's go uh, let's hear some stories stories yeah that's a good idea maybe maybe stories will take my mind off all this bad news <sighs> I really like the books you chose for today Mara and I think the kids are gonna like them too oh I'm sure they're going to like them Mara Mara what? something terrible's happened oh <laughs> Kino, aren't you going to say hello to Barbara and me first? Oh, hi, Mara. Hi, Barbara. Hi. Something terrible, terrible has happened. Well, well what's wrong, Kino? I lost my rollerblades. Oh. oh. Let's go to the story circle. Mm -hmm. Gosh, Kino, I'm really sorry to hear that. I guess your friends must have helped you look for them, but no luck, huh? Come on, hi. Hi. They're purple with yellow wheels on them, in case you see them. Oh. <sighs> maybe if I read a story, you'll feel better. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Which story? Well, I have a story about how to tell a story. You do? Well, hmm, I don't understand. Ooh. You will. You'll, you'll understand. <laughs> it's called Aunt Isabel Tells a Good One. And the words and the pictures are by Kate Duke. Aunt Isabel tells a good one. Tell me a story, said Penelope, one night after supper. What kind of a story, asked Aunt Isabel. A good story, said Penelope. All right, said Aunt Isabel. Now, a good story is the hardest kind to tell. You've got to put together all the right ingredients. Let's start by giving it a when and a where. When does the story begin? Long, long ago, said Penelope. And where does it begin? Asked Aunt Isabel. Think of a place where exciting things can happen. A cave, said Penelope. Long, long ago, whispered Aunt Isabel, there was a deep, dark cave in a gloomy forest where nobody lived except creatures who loved night and darkness and hid from the light. Ooh, that's too scary, said Penelope. Well, we'll put something cheerful in our story, too, said Aunt Isabel. Think of a who. Who shall be in this story? How about a handsome prince named Augustus? who lives on a sunny high hill way up above the gloomy forest. Well, certainly in a castle with his mother and father, the king and queen, Aunt Isabel agreed. Prince Augustus is as kind 
as he is good looking. He likes to have picnics in the garden and he's always happy to share his sandwiches. Well, I like this prince, said Penelope. Me too, said Aunt Isabel. Now let's add something else, someone else, someone talented and charming. Shall we name this darling animal Penelope? Well, Lady Penelope, said Penelope. Lady Nell, for short, said Aunt Isabel. Now where does she come from? Nobody knows. She travels about wherever she likes and she's learned many secrets and clever ways from the creatures she has met. She can fiddle like a cricket. She can sing like a dove, and she could wiggle her ears as well as any jackrabbit. Best of all, she has four pet fireflies that she can juggle like spinning gold stars. And one day, her travels take her by the castle. Prince Augustus hears her singing. What a beautiful voice, he says. He offers her a sandwich. What a generous heart he has. Pretty soon, guess what happens? They fall in love, Penelope exclaimed. <laughs> exactly. So now our story has romance in it too, said Aunt Isabel. Oh, this story is coming out so nice, said Penelope. Too much niceness can be dull though, said Aunt Isabel. Well, we'll add a problem. Now listen. The king looks out from the castle and he growls, who is that raggedy girl? Dreadful, dreadful creatures, says the queen. Oh, can you imagine? She wiggles her ears. Oh, so, so unladylike. Not the sort of animal we want our prince to know, thunders the king. Be gone with her. And with that, they send Lady Nell away and forbid Augustus ever to speak to her again. <gasps> Isn't that sad? Asked Aunt Isabel. Well, I think we should leave that problem part out, grumbled Penelope. Well, just, just wait. Wait till you hear what happens next, said Aunt Isabel, because now we put villains into the story. Alone and sad. Augustus sits in the garden, weeping onto his sandwiches. Night comes and still he weeps. Finally, the queen goes out to scold him for being foolish, but he's gone. <gasps> On the garden seat lies a note, and it says, the prince has been snatched. Give up the throne if you want him back. Signed, odious mole and bad egg bat. <gasps> How the queen weeps, how the king wails, and oh, what a panic there is in the kingdom. Odious mole and bad egg bat. <gasps> Those bullies who lurk in dark places, plotting their mischief, they're on the rampage. <gasps> the townsfolk pack their things and rush to escape. The king and queen wring their paws, wondering what to do. But when Lady Nell hears the news, she doesn't run away. Oh, no. She doesn't waste time with paw ringing. She leaves her camping out place, sneaks back to the castle garden, and she finds a clue. A trail of sandwich crumbs leads away from the castle and into the gloomy forest at the bottom of the hill. Uh-oh, uh-oh, more scary stuff is coming, says Penelope. A little danger is very good for a story, says Aunt Isabel. Lady Nell follows the trail farther and farther into the forest, and at last she comes to the mouth of the deep, dark cave. Should she go inside? No! Squeak Penelope. Well, someone's got to save the prince, argued Aunt Isabel. So, Lady Nell marches in, their shadows all around. The cave twists and winds. She turns a corner, and she sees Prince Augustus all tied up. Nellie, he shouts. Augie, she cries, and leaps to help him. Suddenly, a voice snarls, not so fast, my little friends, and out rushes odious Mole. Ooh, with a sneer, he reaches toward them with his long, sharp claws. Oh, no, cried Penelope. What are they going to do? Quick as a flash, Aunt Isabel replied, Lady Nell, 
calls her fireflies and begins to juggle. Juggle? Juggle? She juggles, said Penelope. Why? Well, because, you remember, she's traveled far and wide, answered Aunt Isabel. She's learned the secrets of creatures who hide in the darkness of caves. So up go the fireflies, and they spin, spin around and sparkle, and they light up the cave like bright gold stars. Spades and shovels, yelps odious mole. My eyes, my eyes, the lights hurt my eyes. Get them away from me. Run, Augustus, cries Lady Nell. After them, bad egg cries odious. Down from the ceiling sweeps bad egg bat, squealing. <laughs> you can't stop a bat with your puny fireflies. Now I'll eat them up. What a treat. <laughs> Lady Nell and Augusta scurry into the shadows to hide, but bad egg screeches. <laughs> a bat can find you in the dark. I can hear where you are. <gasps> Run quietly, Augustus whispers Lady Nell, but their paws go skittering, scattering on the floor. <laughs> I hear you, squeals, bad egg. I'll get you now. What will Lady Nell do? <gasps> sing, Augustus, she cries. And they both start to sing as loudly as they can. Their voices echo and echo and echo through the cave. Soon it sounds like a hundred princes and a hundred lady nails. What a racket! Now, Bad Egg can't tell which voices are the real ones, and he doesn't know which ones to follow. Barnes and Belfry, stop the noise, he screeches, stop the noise! Around and around he flies, banging against the walls, and finally knocks himself on the head, and he falls down in a heap. Lady Nell and Prince Augustus dash out of the cave. They don't stop running until they're out of the forest and safely back at the castle on the hill. <sighs> With shouts of joy, the king and queen rush to greet them. When Augustus tells them of Lady Nell's courage and cleverness, the king hugs her. And the queen says, what fools we've been. My dear, you will always be welcome here. Lady Nell wiggles her ears with delight. The king and queen call the whole kingdom together for a celebration, and everyone dances until dawn while the fireflies twirl and they somersault overhead. As for Odious and Bad Egg, they slink back into the depths of the cave and they stay there. They don't dare to come out because now they know no one will ever be afraid of them again. Is that the end? asked Penelope. Well, it's a happy ending every good story should have, Aunt Isabel replied. Do Prince Augustus and Lady Nell get married? asked Penelope. Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. Would you? asked Aunt Isabel. But first, Lady Nell becomes a famous musician. And first, Prince Augustus becomes a good and wise king. All that will have to wait, though, until we're ready to make up another good story. <laughs> and now, my dear Penelope, it's time for you to go to I, bed. Are you feeling better, Kina? <laughs> <laughs> are you? Yeah. You're yeah. a little better, yeah, I are guess you? So. Isn't yeah. that nice? Nothing like a story to help you feel better. Did you think it was a good story? Yeah. Because it says Aunt Isabel tells a good one. <laughs> Did she tell a good one? Yeah! Kino, what did you think about this story? Well, gee, it, it really was a very good story, but I still feel a little bit sad. Oh. oh. Barbara, do you think you could please, please, please read us another story? Oh, yes. How could yeah. I resist? In fact, I have another story here, and it's about names, and it's about a porcupine named Fluffy. Fluffy? Mm-hmm. A porcupine? Mm hmm Gee, I don't think fluffy when you say porcupine. Those two words just don't seem to go together. <laughs> now, if you say bunny rabbit, then I think fluffy. Mm -hmm. Well, at least fluffy is a friendly kind of name, not like, uh, what was that? Odious mole and, and old, ugly, and awful no, egg no. bat. Or egg, bat. Egg, egg, bat. egg bat. Egg bat. Bad egg, egg bat. bats from that That's other right. story. <laughs> I want to hear this story. Okay. Do you want to hear it, Kino? I'm all ears. 
they're huge for my years. But a story will feel good. That's understood. <laughs> a poem. A oh. poem. <laughs> a poem. Now, this will cheer you up. A porcupine named Fluffy with the words by Helen Lester and the pictures by Lynn Munsinger. So let's find out about this porcupine. When Mr. and Mrs. Porcupine had their first child, they were delighted. Now he needed a name. Should they call him Spike? No, Spike was too common. Should they call him Lance? No, Lance sounded too fierce. Should they call him Needle Rooser? Mm. No, Needle Rooser is too long. Prickles, Pokey, Quillian? Oh, then together, they had an idea. They said, let's call him Fluffy. It's such a pretty name. But soon, there came a time when Fluffy began to doubt that he was Fluffy. He first became suspicious when he backed into a door and he stuck. That was not a fluffy thing to do. Mm -mm. He was even more convinced when he accidentally slept on his back and he poked holes in his mattress. A very unfluffy like thing to do. <laughs> when he tried to carry an umbrella, he knew the truth without a doubt. Fluffy definitely wasn't. <laughs> So he decided to become Fluffy, or clouds are Fluffy, he thought. I'll be a cloud. But he couldn't stay up. I know, pillows are Fluffy, he said. I'll be a pillow. But when his mother sat on him, she was not pleased. Wow. He tried soaking in a bubble bath for 45 minutes, but he did not become Fluffy. He became soggy. Okay. Yuck. He tried whipped cream. He put a little on each quill, and it was not an easy thing to do, and it took more than half a day. But this did not make Fluffy Fluffy, no. They should have named me Gooey. <laughs> he sighed. <laughs> he ate a lot of fluffy marshmallows. He rolled in shaving cream and feathers. He even tried to become a bunny. But the truth remained, Fluffy was her. One day, Fluffy set out for a walk, trying to think of ways to become Fluffy. And before long, he met a very large rhinoceros. Grrr, said the rhinoceros, I'm gonna give you a rough time. Fluffy didn't know what a rough time was, but he didn't like the sound of it at all. What is your name, you small prickly thing? Asked the rhinoceros unkindly. Fluffy. Said Fluffy. The rhinoceros smiled. He giggled. And then he laughed out loud. He rolled on the ground. He jiggled. He slapped his knees. He roared with laughter. A porcupine. <laughs> Fluffy, he said. Oh! Fluffy was embarrassed. But he tried to be polite and he said, And what is your name? Huh. I can't say it. Giggle the rhinoceros. Hubert suggested Fluffy. Huh, huh, oh, help, I just can't say it. I am laughing so hard, said the rhinoceros. <laughs> Harold or maybe Herman asked Fluffy. No, <laughs> said the rhinoceros. No, it's, it's, it's hippo. Hippo? A rhinoceros named Hippo? <laughs> Fluffy smiled. He giggled, and then he laughed out loud, and then he jiggled, and he slapped his knees, and he howled with laughter. A rhinoceros named Hippo, Fluffy cried. A porcupine named Fluffy. A rhinoceros named Hippo. It was almost more than they could bear. <laughs> Hippo and Fluffy rolled on the ground, giggling and laughing, until tears came into their eyes. And at last, they lay exhausted on the ground. And from that time on, they were the best of friends. And Fluffy didn't mind being Fluffy anymore, even though he wasn't. <laughs> oh, that was a good story. <laughs> like that story? Oh. At the end of the story, does Fluffy feel better about his name? Yes. Yes. 
because he met somebody with an equally ridiculous name, right? <laughs> That's right. Kino, now what do you think about calling a porcupine fluffy? Well, I kind of like it now. Mm. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's unusual. Maybe I just needed to get used to it. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi Marcus. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Marcus. Hey. <sighs> Kino, why are you so sad? Everybody's here. Everybody's reading stories. This is your favorite thing to do. What's wrong? Well, we were trying to help Kino forget about his loss. What'd you lose, Kino? I can't find my rollerblades. <laughs> your rollerblades? You left them at my house yesterday. What? <laughs> I did? <laughs> I left my rollerblades at your house? Yes, 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 yes. I left my rollerblades at Marcus's house, everybody. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Gee, sorry, sorry. Uh, did you bring them, Marcus? No. I didn't think to. Well, well let's, let's go get them. Okay, oh, let's wait, go. wait, 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 please. I, huh? I was wondering if Marcus would read us a story. Morris's yes. disappearing bag? Yes. Very interesting. I'll read it. Right. Oh, good. Let's hear this. Thanks, Vanessa. Well, I changed my mind. I'm staying. This one sounds like a really good story. Oh, good. All right. This one is called Morris's disappearing bag. Great. And the story is by Rosemary Wells. And the pictures are by Rosemary so Wells. Yay. And this one is a Christmas story. A Christmas story? Ooh. Morris's oh, disappearing bag. It was Christmas morning. Wow, said Morris. Morris's brother Victor he got a hockey outfit. And Morris's sister Rose, she got a beauty kit. And Morris's other sister Betty, she got a chemistry set. And Morris, Morris got a bear. All Christmas Day, Victor played hockey. And Rose made herself beautiful, mm -hmm. and Betty makes dasses. And then Betty made herself beautiful, and Victor sorted test tubes, and Rose played hockey. And then Victor made himself beautiful, <laughs> and Betty played goalie, and Rose invented a new gas. <laughs> but Morris was too young to play with chemicals, Betty said. He might blow up the house. Oh. He was too little to play hockey, said Victor. He might get hurt. Oh, yeah. And he was too silly to use the beauty kit, Rose said. He'd waste all the lipstick. And nobody wanted to play with Morris's bear. Come, said Morris's mother. Let's make a hat for your bear. No, said Morris. Let's take your bear for a walk, suggested Morris's father. No, said Morris. Morris wouldn't eat his dinner. What's the matter with Morris, asked his father. I think he hit himself in the head with the hockey puck, said Victor. <laughs> Maybe he ate the lipstick, said Rose. It was the gas, said Betty. <laughs> he breathed it in. Morris sat under the Christmas tree. Suddenly, he noticed a package that had been overlooked. He opened it, and in it was a disappearing bag. So Morris crawled right in. Morris, said Victor. Right here, said Morris. Where, asked Victor. Where's Morris, asked Betty and Rose. Over here, said Morris. But they couldn't find him. Maybe he blew himself up, said Betty. Do you suppose he's so beautiful we wouldn't recognize him, asked Rose? Dad, shouted Victor. Morris is skating so fast we can't see him. Morris came out of his bag. Where were you, asked Victor. I was in my disappearing bag, said Morris. I want to use it, shouted Victor. Me first, said Rose. You can play with my chemicals, said Betty. Morris held open his bag. Everybody disappeared all at once. Then he zoomed and mixed and beautified until bedtime. Bedtime, said Morris. Uh -oh. May I use the bag tomorrow, asked Rose. I want to sleep in it tonight, said Betty. Morris, said Victor, I hope you remember where you put the bag. But Morris was already fast asleep.
Oh, that was a great story. Oh, Thank you, you Mark. Yeah. That was great. So, did you guys like the book? Yeah. Yeah? What was the best part about it? The what? The disappearing bag. The disappearing bag. bag. What would you do if you had a disappearing bag? I would disappear. And when I was ball. playing hide and seek, nobody would find me. And you know what else? If you could remember where the disappearing bag was, you could always keep secret stuff in it. <gasps> stuff you never wanted anybody else to know, you could put it in your disappearing bag. And people could look for it and look for it and look for it and they never find it. Hey, Marcus, think of all the things we could do if we had a disappearing bag. Ooh. Kino, think about all the things you could lose. <laughs> oh, don't even say that word. It, it makes me think of almost losing, oops, my roller blades. Oh. But thanks to Marcus, you found them. Yeah. By the way, Marcus, thank you for doing such a great job with that story. My pleasure. And Barbara, thank you so much for coming to visit. Will you two come thank again? You. Absolutely. Oh, sure. Great. Yes. Now, Mara? Now, Kino. OK, OK, OK. <clears throat> My story picks for this week are The Wingding Dilly. It's another book about an animal with a funny name. <laughs> and an old story with a scary witch called Heckety Peg. Heckety Peg. Yeah. Hmm. I like your picks this week, Kino. Well, you are all invited to visit for our next story time. Until then, keep, keep a story, story in your heart. Arriba there, cheap pals. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Today's storytime books are Aunt Isabel Tells a Good One by Kate Duke, A Porcupine Named Fluffy by Helen Lester, illustrated by Lynn Munsinger, Morris's Disappearing Bag by Rosemary Wells, The Winding Dilly by Bill Peet, and Heckety Peg by Audrey Wood, illustrated by Don Wood. You can find these and other books at your local library. Major funding for Storytime is made possible by a grant from Helen and Peter Bing so that families everywhere can share the joy of reading with their children. Additional funding is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. By the annual financial support from viewers like you. And by the National Endowment for Children's Educational Television. Storytime is a production of KCET Los Angeles.